Okay, gonna be hard doing this one-handed, but this is a dead piece of one of those, I believe a gray birch here. And most of the birches with this shreddy bark. You don't want the the inner stuff, this dark woody stuff. You just want to yeah, it's not shreddy enough. Peel some of the shreddy stuff off this thin layer right here. Actually if I could get more of that woody stuff off it would be even better. But then uh, how I'm going to do this with one hand. I'm going to set you there. Okay. Lights very easily. Also it smells pretty good. But uh yeah, it's kind of a survival thing. The uh the bark lights very easily, so a lot of people will find that shreddy bark and save it or they'll find something like this on the ground and so that's right off the ground it's kind of damp here today so it still lights pretty readily you can almost see my car from here okay i'm here next to this yellow birch some branches been sitting on the ground for a while here i'm gonna see if i can Peel off some of this thin, shreddy bark here. Oh, cocoon. Somebody lives there. But, uh, yeah, it's probably some sort of a silk moth. At any rate, I'm going to take this piece and set it here on this branch. And then I'm going to... Let's try to switch hands and grab my lighter here. Okay, you can still see that there. Yeah, burns quite well, quite quickly. And that was from a waterlogged stick sitting on the ground with snow covering part of it. So just goes to show how good of a fuel it is. And before this tree gets hurt, I'm gonna take this and put it out and throw it in the snow over here. But, yeah, just a little extra tip about the, uh, the birch trees here. Very good for starting fires. Kind of an easy to identify vine here. This is a type of clematis called virgin's bower. And it's got these nice fluffy seed heads, which is what makes it so identifiable. And this guy behind him with the, it would be hollow. I don't want to break it because he's live and green here. He's broken here. You can, eh, can't really see too good. But this bush right here is an elderberry. Kind of beat up, but it's an elderberry. It's got the kind of speckly bark there. Likes wet places. We're next to Sandy Creek. And a lot more identifiable in the winter, but it's it's got the uh, the look of it, a little bit more of it over there. Yeah, just looking at Sandy Creek. See sand on the bottom. I guess that's how it got its name. Also, a lot of rocks. Don't see any fish or anything but they do stock this with trout all 
and a little bit downstream of the the bridge there. Um, came in here. There's a little wetland over there. Um, I know it's a wetland because there's more of these over there. This is skunk cabbage just coming up with its little little sort of arum flower that it has this time of year. Another one coming up there. I was actually hoping to see something called a scouring rush. Um, oh, somebody flying around up there. But uh, that was an interesting little interlude. But this little path right here is beavers playing around. And you can see right there where they've been munching on this cherry tree. And eventually I guess they'll munch their way through and chop it down. They haven't seemed to touch much of the other ones here. Um, this one here looks like he's healing from a bite or two, but... This one back here, they, they ring barked it and killed it at the very least because the bark's gone all the way around for about two feet at the bottom. Uh, just thought that was interesting. You can see this little floodplain here is mostly on the other side past this point, the bank. It's kind of steep over there and populated with hemlocks. Um, go back here where it's a little bit more mucky and the leaves of that looks like some sort of buttercup and here's more of the, the skunk cabbage there um, or a few more there's one here's a pretty big one you can see the the flower there and that'll open up and it's got like this little a little bocce ball looking thing inside. Some more stuff coming up there. But, yeah, moving on. I only stopped here for a couple things. Same game lands, different spot. Um, maybe show you a couple more of the, these a little bit bigger of the, uh, whatchamacallit, the skunk cabbage right here. Sometimes they actually melt back the ice around them a little bit, but these guys are, soil's kind of frozen, but they're, uh, they're not really in the iciest part. Well, that guy's got some ice against them, but, yeah, a pal palustrine, wetland here and uh, moving on to find some other things oh here's something just to show you how myths don't work they always say moss grows more on the north side of a tree grows on one side at the bottom looks like he's growing on the other side up there usually don't see moss growing that far up on a tree but this kind of shows that uh it's an old wives' tale. It's based on the fact that uh, you know, the north side of the tree doesn't get any sun, but you can see the sun shining right on this moss right here, right now. So, yeah, don't rely on it for navigation in the woods. Yeah, just an interesting tree you find in floodplains. It's a hornbeam. Sometimes they call it a muscle wood, or I've heard them call it a blue beech too, because if you look along the trunks here. That's the actual bark, that's not bare wood. It's just got that smooth gray bark, but it's kind of got those ripples in it that looks like muscles underneath the, the skin of a person or an animal or something. Yeah, I don't see any seeds on it or anything, but uh, just a little bit more for the winter tree ID. This bush here. There we go. This bush here is 
one of several species called nine bark. And it's got some jagger bushes growing around it. But you can tell the nine bark here because it's got those type of seeds hanging there. And it's got this sort of shreddy bark here. Call it nine bark because it supposedly has nine layers. Don't know if it has nine, but it has many. Um, it's hard to distinguish at the bottom where it begins and ends. It's got a multiflora rose with these nice uh, spines kind of intertwined with it a little bit here. Here's a better look at one on the other side of the road. There's the seed heads up there. And you can trace it back, the shreddy bark going down to the ground. So this is a nine bark. Okay, the oak trees that always get the galls, although this one isn't too bad, are the uh, the shingle oak. And this is close up a one. You can see they've got sort of leaf-shaped leaves, for lack of a better way of putting it. Tend to hold their leaves in winter. You can see up there a little gall. Um, don't confuse it with the, the tree behind it there. That's a cherry tree that's got uh, some sort of prune, prune cherry infection that's been kind of rampant the last couple years here. Um, but I'm talking about the galls, the, the, the round things. You can see a round one up on that branch there. I don't see any closer at the moment but a lot of times the larger trees seem to lose a little bit more of their leaves and have a few more of the galls see what else I can find here okay this is an alder tree smooth bark not the nine bark there but this guy here and he's got his new little flower heads out and he's got these little the, the seeds are almost in little pine cones one a little bit closer you can see the the new flowers out there at the end you can also see these seed cones here Ooh, still some seeds in there actually quite a few hmm. see the little seeds but yeah it's probably now the lenticles on the bark or so-called speckles, I would say this is probably a speckled alder. So, it's native, they usually like swampy areas. This is kind of swampy. Uh, you can't really tell, it's kind of a little swamp back there that kind of drains around through and then goes down the road towards the creek, so, but yeah.